Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the Knitting Expat podcast. This is episode 16, and my name is Mina. I'll be your host today. And yeah, so where you can find me, you can find me as Mina Phillip on Instagram. You can find me as Mina86 on Ravelry. The Ravelry group for the podcast is the Knitting Expat podcast on the group section of Ravelry. Um, You can find show notes for this episode and all other episodes on knittingexpat.wordpress.com and you can also email me um, knittingexpat at gmail.com. I don't really advertise that much but it's on all of my patterns and stuff so that's another way you can get in touch with me if you need to. And you can find my project bags for sale on Etsy at minamakes.etsy.com. And all of that will be linked down below in the description box section on YouTube. Uh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself last week. I realised after I'd filmed and whilst I was editing that I never actually introduced myself or told you guys who I was. Um, so for those of you who were new and were watching last week for the first time, apologies for that. My name's Mina. Uh, I live in Bahrain and that's why I'm called the Knitting Expat. I'm a knitter and I'm an expat. Kind of explains itself really. And um, I'm originally from the UK, live in Bahrain at the moment with my husband, and yeah, it's been an interesting few months, I have to say. I mean, we were in Dubai before we moved to Bahrain. This is for those of you who are new. I imagine some of you have been watching for a while now, probably know all of this, but I thought I'd give a brief little recap for anyone who's new to the show today. Um, And I'm back in Bahrain this week, as you can all tell, I'm back home and I'm very happy to be back. It's Last week was a bit hectic. Um, I say hectic, it wasn't actually all that hectic. Um, it was very productive, I guess. It was productive, it was quite surreal for the most part. Um, but I'll get, more, I'll get to that a bit more later in the episode. So uh, another thing <laughs> I had last week is, okay, I'll briefly mention it here. So for those of you who don't know, I was in Saudi Arabia last week sorting out visa stuff and other bits. Uh, More detail about that later. But when I filmed my last episode, I had such issues with uploading and actually even just getting it out of iMovie, getting it exported. iMovie was coming up with some sort of video render error 50, which was, I don't know what was going wrong. I looked it up online eventually. I mean, all these different suggestions were coming up on ways to solve it, but nothing actually seemed to be the problem. So... I don't know, in the end, for some reason, it decided it was now going to export and it was fine. Um, and then uploading took forever. I ended up having to leave it to upload overnight. And then the next morning found that it crashed, <laughs> which was not fun. But uh, thankfully, YouTube remembered it crashed at 94% uploaded. Um, thankfully, YouTube remembered where it was. So when I went to re upload, it sort of just picked back up again. And I think it's been okay. No one's complained since there's issues with the videos. So. Yay. Uh, so outline for this week's episode, going to cover finished objects, works in progress, um, knit alongs, project bag information, acquisitions, week in review, and then Q&A. It seems to be the general outline for my episodes nowadays, which is fine by me. Um, my first FO is the one I'm wearing. It's my Persistence's key cardigan. And I'm calling this an FO, and I'll explain why in a minute. But it's all done. Sleeves are all finished. They're nice and long, just how I like my sleeves. I like my sleeves to be that length, especially for cardigans and stuff. And I'll show you the back. There you see the cable details nicely down the back. I'll show you on this side. But yeah, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I finished this whilst we were in Saudi Arabia and I was, I'm going to take it off now because it's absolutely boiling. It's a worsted weight cardigan and it's like 40 degrees centigrade outside. It's ridiculous. Um, it's a worsted weight cardigan. You can see the back better here. And it blocked out quite nicely. It blocked out a bit bigger than I'd intended. But it's fine. It was only ever supposed to be sort of like a loose cardigan. It's supposed to have positive ease anyway. So quite happy with it and the reason why I'm calling this a finished object even though it's technically not finished is because of well the reason why it's not finished is I went to go I decided to go with the option of adding a zipper so I did the button bands without the buttonholes <coughs> sorry without the buttonholes as the pad suggested for inserting a zipper but I can't find a zipper here 
to uh, that would match in color and would be the right sort of level of chunkiness because you can't just use a regular bag zipper it's too small um, so yeah anyway but my mum has found a zipper for me so uh, I'll be getting that from her soon and more about that later but that was that took up about 1200 meters of yarn so quite a I still have quite a lot of that yarn left over. I was kind of hoping to get rid of most of it and that. It was all acrylic, but it's fine. It's, it's good for like a throw around sweater to have around the house, or I might give it to my mum if she likes it, when she gets it. I just gave it away. <laughs> my mum's coming to Bahrain next week, so or at the end of this week rather, for, um, for about nine days, so it'll be nice to have her here. But like I said, more about that later. And my second FO are another pair of socks. These, I guess, are technically my June socks, but these socks are crazy zabable socks. Lip from the cuff down with the fish lips kiss heel, which I'm starting to fall back in love with again. I kind of had a bit of an issue with the fish lips kiss heel because it kept moving on my foot. And then I realized I just knit the foot too long on those socks and that's why it was moving. I. I don't I seem, I seem to have a small, tiny, teeny, tiny, little, little, itty bitty hole on the corners. I'm not sure why. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't seem to pull too much. Um, how are these already covered in cat fluff? I was sick. Anyway, so these are a pair of socks that I did for my dad. And thankfully, as I realised after doing cardboard cutouts of my dad's foot and my brother's foot, and obviously my foot, uh, we all have exactly the same size and shape foot. Literally, almost exactly the same. Um, so, making socks for my dad are quite easy. As long as they fit me, I know they'll fit him. So, there we go. There's, there's pairs of socks. And that covers my FOs for this week. Um, yeah. Two objects done. I'm happy with that. And moving on to whips. The first whip I have is ooh, not that one. In one of my medium-sized project bags. Even though this is just a sock whip, but there's actually still there is loads of room in there. Um, just want to change up the bags I'm using. And I'm knitting another pair of socks in here. This is just a plain vanilla sock with a two by two rib. Self sorted here. There we go. And I'm kind of doing these. This is a self striping Serdar Heart and Soul that I got in London from John Lewis. Um, this is the yarn. So I've got the tag here. Let me just dig out the tag. Show you. I can't remember what colorway name this is. So this is the yarn, said our heart and soul, and it's shade 107. It's just these beautiful sort of, there's a dark pink, a purple, a light blue, and then a light pink, and that's how it stripes. And I'm striping, and I wound these up the same way, but I'm knitting one from the outside and one from the inside, from the center pull, so the stripes will go opposites. So they both start on purple, but they're, they're going the opposite way. So every other stripe will line up. So after the pink, after the light pink, the next one on this foot will be the pale blue and the next one on this will be the dark pink. So they'll be the same, but kind of the opposite at the same time. So that'd be quite nice. And um, these aren't really my colors, but I'm knitting these for a friend. And I actually really like the colors together in the ball. I just knew I wouldn't really wear socks like this, but I'm knitting these up for a friend, for my friend Steph actually in uh, Dubai, the one with the twins and the new baby who I stayed with when I was there a few weeks ago. Um, so these are going to be for her. Uh, and I know she'll love these colours, so I am not worried about that at all, and I know she'll appreciate them. So this is quite a simple, quite standard sock pattern, vanilla sock pattern. It's two by two rib for 20 rows, um, and then just stock and stitch, or stock and stitch, down to the heel, I'll probably do a fish lips kiss heel on these and just knit the foot 
and do toe decreases. I like, I quite like the um, rounded toe. That seems to be the one that I go to most often now when I knit socks. I like the shape it gives at the bottom of the foot. I'll show you on this one. I prefer the slightly rounded toe shape over the completely squared off shape. I just think it looks nicer and it fits just as well. Uh, it's being this on 2.25 millimeter needles. Uh, that's my that's my friend's foot cut out. She's got tiny feet, tiny tiny feet. So her socks will be nice and quick. <laughs> so that's my first whip, but I only cast that on a couple of days ago. Yeah, a couple of days ago, and I've just done the cuff. My second whip is the Rock Island shawl by Jared Flood. Let me just find a picture to show you. That's the shawl. And I'm using Drops Lace, uh, which is their alpaca silk blend in the olive colorway. This is where I'm at. Uh, yeah, this is showing you the right side. So I finished the border. Sorry, I'm trying to untangle myself here. And I picked up all the edge stitches. So this is the border bit down here. This little section at the bottom from here downwards, this bit. So I picked up all the stitches along here. And, and now I'm knitting upwards, so I'm decreasing. And I've decided to basically use all the stitch markers that I own, <laughs> as it seems. They're not all of them, to be honest, but a good proportion of them. And I'm marking out every six stitch lace repeat, every six stitch repeat in the lace chart. Because frankly, I find using stitch markers on lace is the best way and the easiest way to pretty much guarantee that you're not going to um, mess up. It's not 100% guaranteed, but what it means is when you get to the end of each repeat, you can do a quick check to make sure you've got the right number of stitches and then move on. That way you don't get to the end of the row and realize you've got an extra stitch or you're short a couple of stitches and then got to go all the way back and try and figure out where you made the mistake. This way you kind of spot the mistake almost as soon as it happens and at worst you only have to tink back one or two repeats rather than a whole row. And it's the first time I'm working with lace weight yarn and the chart is, the chart has you doing, um, you don't have any rest rows on the chart, every row has you doing something. There's yarn overs and decreases and whatever that's on every row. So for that reason as well, I needed to do something. I, I figured this is the best way for me to be able to knit on this without it being overly complicated. I mean, it's not complicated. The chart itself isn't complicated, but trying to make sure you keep track of where you are. And you know, just in case I have to randomly stop in the middle of a row if my phone rings or you know, if the doorbell goes or whatever, or if Perry talks to me, I don't know, whatever happens, I don't have to worry about, oh, if I randomly stop somewhere, I won't be able to figure out where I am. So, so yeah, I'm using stitch markers for every repeat. So there, yes, there are about 34 stitch markers or 35 on this um, <laughs> at the moment, but you know what, it's worked so far and I haven't had to tink back once. So just my uh, two cents on that one. Oh, and get this all back into the bag. That's another one of my project bags. And this was also one of my project bags, I don't know if I mentioned that. This is one of my medium sized bags, so this is actually big enough to fit a shawl project in. And probably the start of a sweater or something. There we go. And other things that I will be working on, I haven't exactly cast it on yet, but I will be working on my dad's uh, raglan jumper. And so I think I've shown you this before, I've shown you the yarn before, but this is Drops Big Merino. So this is their merino blend yarn. It's really soft, really squishy, lovely and springy. And I will be casting that on for his jumper soon. And then the other thing that I want to start 
It's another pair of socks. I have literally, and you'll see why when I get to my acquisition section as well, but I have been really, really craving casting on all the socks this last week. Honestly, it's just been, I want to knit socks all the time. All the socks, all the time. The next thing I'm going to cast on are a pair of socks <laughs> in this beautiful rainbow colour, sort of somewhat stripy gradient, which is I Knit or Die by I Knit in London, which I picked up at I Knit Fandango. There's a lot of I Knits there. And this is their Lazaretto sock, four ply, 100 grams, 400 meters, 75% superwash merino, and 25% nylon in a lovely rainbow. And this kind of got me thinking, I saw after the news in the US this last week about um, the Supreme Court passing the laws on uh, uh, gay marriage and all of that in the US, I saw all the lovely rainbows, um, rainbow uh, patterns being cast on and all the, on Instagram, which is literally my newsfeed full of rainbows and you guys know I'm obsessed with rainbows so it just made me so happy as well as obviously the results and the decision and all of that. I was just so happy to see the, my Instagram feed so full of rainbows. So that kind of got me thinking and this, and the only reason this is not cast on yet is I'm still trying to decide whether or not I will have enough patience to knit this one sock at a time or if I want to wind up half of this and knit one sock from a ball and one sock from the blank. I haven't fully decided yet what I'm going to do, that's why it's not cast on yet. I think once I figure it out, because I do want to knit this, I think I do want to knit it two at a time, but we will see. I haven't fully decided yet. Um, but yes, yeah, so that got me thinking. Uh, sorry, let me backtrack quickly for a second. So the socks I showed you first, the Serdar Heart and Soul, that will also be, because Serdar Heart and Soul is a UK yarn. It's um, going to be my first entry into the Bakery Bears um, Brit Along knit along that they've got going at the moment and this will be my second one because it's also from the UK, it's a UK yarn hand dyed so those are going to be two of my entries so far there's only two I've come up with for now but there's a bunch of other sock knit alongs out there as well and especially with this one and with everything that's happened in the news lately um, I kind of been inspired to, I want to start another knit along for my group and this one is going to be a rainbow along now, how many of you have probably already guessed where that was going before I even said it? But anyway, so yes, a rainbow along um, in the group. It's going to start from as soon as this episode is live and I've got the thread up on the group. Uh, whips are fine, more than welcome to include whips. Um, basically, anything that's finished from today, whenever this episode goes live, up until the, at the moment, I want to say end of September. So it's going to be a nice three month long knit along for anything rainbow themed. It can be bright rainbows, it can be traditional rainbows, it can be muted rainbows. Um, it can be anything that is on a rainbow theme, any sort of yarn that is on a rainbow theme, any sort of pattern that involves like a rainbow theme, whatever you want. It can be neon rainbows, it can be whatever, anything that you can justifiably call a rainbow or you know just be colorful really or anything that's it doesn't even have to be a traditional rainbow it can be like a nice sort of gradient of colors i just want it to be fun <laughs> so come and join the cat and this along for that <coughs> mm, sorry <coughs> apologies for that um yeah i just wanted it to be a nice colorful knit along for the summer so that will be a hashtag rainbow along <laughs> and there will be prizes. You're more than welcome, oh by the way, you're also more than welcome to double dip. Pretty much all my knit alongs, anything that I will run, you'll always be welcome to double dip into other ones. So there'll, there will be prizes, including um, a project bag made by me that uh, I haven't quite decided which one yet. But, but yeah, also I'd be willing to, um, be interested to hear from any like yarn dyers or um, stitch marker makers or other bag makers who may want to donate prizes if you want to donate a prize just get in touch let me know and Ravelry will sort something out and uh, and yeah and that will be 
that would be great. So I think once I start getting an idea on what um, prizes are available and stuff, I'll announce it in future episodes. I kind of just came up with this idea last night of wanting to do this and I hadn't really given too much thought, but there will be prizes. I think the number of overall prizes will depend on um, the number of entrants. And so more people who enter, more prizes I'll have. So a bit of incentive there for you guys. So yeah, come and join the group and um, all the information for what, you know, the guidelines and rules for entry and stuff will be in the chatter thread and the FO thread. I'll post both. The FO thread will be a no chatter thread. Um, so just for posting finished objects, there'll be one object, one finished object per entry. You know, if you're knitting socks, it's going to be a pair of socks or if it's mittens, it'll be a pair of mittens. So you know, it's going to be a little bit reasonable. Um, but yeah, each finished object is a entry and, and yeah, so there we go. Uh, and oh, okay. Sun rays knit along for my sun rays shawl pattern. That's in full swing now. The FO thread for that will be open in a couple of days. Sorry about the rustling. That's for this one. This is my sun rays shawl. And I'll put this one on actually. And yeah, so this, the knit along is in full swing. There are some really beautiful um, shawl whips in the chatter thread at the moment. And this is my other version, the blue one, blue and green. And yeah, it's there's some really lovely chatter going on, really lovely shawls to have a look at that are in progress. Um, Andy of Andre Sue Knits is using a lovely uh, sock blank that she dyed at a gradient, which looks beautiful. I can't wait to see that one finished. And the FO thread will be up in a couple of days. So it's the 29th of June. So yeah, in a couple of days, the FO thread will be up and you can start posting your finished objects. Uh, there is still plenty of time to enter if you haven't started yet. You, you've still got pretty much two months to knit the shawl and it's a very quick shawl. It's a one skein um, shawl project. So nice and easy, nice and quick. So, so yeah, please come take part. There's some lovely prizes. I thought I'll show you some of the prizes, the prizes again because I haven't shown them in a while. One is a skein of the Yarn Trees Fiery Sunset, which is the same colorway that my sample shawl was knit out of. And it was the yarn that was dyed specifically for this design. So there's one skein of that up as a prize. Then there's a skein of the Natural Dye Studios Merino Bamboo Four Ply Sock. And this is 100 grams, 400 yards. Really beautiful in a peacock colorway. And my understanding is this company doesn't actually exist anymore. They're not, not dyeing yarn. So this is a, um, can't get this anymore. So that's, that was kindly donated by a viewer, Katrina. Thank you so much. And finally, the last prize is gonna be a medium sized project bag. So this size project bag made by me. It won't necessarily be this one, but the winner will either get to choose from what I currently have available in my shop or we can discuss based on what fabrics I have on ha have at the time, to do a custom bag at the once I announce the winners. So those are the prizes for that. And speaking of project bags, I'll move on to that section. The <clears throat> project bags First of all, I just want to say thank you again to everyone who's placed an order. I had a few more orders go out this week and I have a couple more to send out as well later. So there's not actually that many left in the shop now. There's like a handful of bags, um, it's like two or three Notions pouches and a handful of other bags in the shop at the moment. So I'm working on the next update, which I'm hoping will be ready for the weekend. At the moment, um, there's a bunch of people, I know I mentioned in my last episode that I wanted to, I'd be up for doing swaps and stuff, and I still am, but I've been in touch, a few people have been in touch to do uh, swaps and or custom orders of some of my bags. So amongst the ones that I'm making for the shop are some other bags for swaps and custom orders. So the actual number going into the shop, I believe will probably be around 13 bags, I think, 13 or 14. So it's not gonna be a massive update and they will probably mostly be sock size bags this time round. 
but I am working on planning out my next couple of updates and I'm trying to work it out for the next, um, to do an update maybe every two weeks, every two to three weeks. We'll see how that works out. Uh, yeah, basically I'm hoping this next update will be ready by the weekend, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. It just depends on how things work out this week. I'll announce it on Instagram and on the Ravelry group in the Project Bags Etsy shop thread so you can keep an eye out for it there. And yeah, I'll, I'll announce when they'll go live and then I'll announce them again on Instagram when they actually have gone live so you guys will have plenty of notice, I hope. So as well as all of that, something else that happened, I think I mentioned this briefly last week as well, was I sent some of my mail sort of orientated, slightly more neutral project bags to Nathan of the Sockmetician podcast. And he received them in record time. Like, honestly, I have no idea what happened with the postal service, but the bags got there in three days, which was just kind of insane, really. But, um, but yeah, so he got them. I sent him four bags, actually. Well, three, three bags and a notions pouch. And the main one, like he mentioned in his podcast a few episodes back now that there's a severe lack of project bags that are a little bit more aimed towards the boys for men. Um, not so much that, you know, not wanting to completely stereotype it, but basically that there are a lot that are quite sort of flowery and quite girly looking, and pinks and stuff like that, which aren't necessarily bags that boys would want to carry around. So you sort of put out a challenge to see if there are any bag makers or other like stitch market makers or whatever who may want to take on that challenge of making something a little bit more male orientated so i did and i made some what i called bags for the boys and i did some of my standard sort of project bag sizes and stuff in shirt fabric that i bought i just bought the fabric from one of the fabric shops and male men's like shirt material shirt cotton and made some project bags out of those but then I also had a few of Perry's shirts that he doesn't wear anymore because they're too big for him. Like he's lost some weight and they're just too baggy around the collar that just looks weird when he wears them. And they're perfectly fine. And I sort of cut out pieces of that and I made a large sort of sweater size um, project bag out of that. And that was one I didn't show you guys because it was, I suppose it was a surprise for Nathan. And I didn't want to spoil it. So what I will do is I will insert some pictures here. So hopefully you'll have seen the pictures and you'll have seen that there's um, what I basically did was for the front of the bag I took the, the button down section of the front of the shirt for the front section and then at the back I used the sleeve of the shirt to create a, big, a large pocket which will take like an A4 size piece of paper as you'll have hopefully seen in one of the photos. And then on the inside, there I used, used the other shirt, used the second shirt to line the inside. And the second shirt had a chest pocket, which forms an internal pocket for holding little notiony things. So that was all like a little trial one to see how it would work out, if it works or not. And Nathan's going to be making a stranded sweater project later this year, he said, and he's going to be using the bag. So it'll be interesting to see how that holds up. And I'm definitely planning on making more of those types of bags in the future I just don't have any more shirts to work with right now so that's kind of on hold at the moment and yeah so that worked out really well I like I said I also sent Nathan a sock size bag and a medium size bag and a notions pouch which was made out of the same shirts as I did the big bag so the little notions bag went with the bigger shirt bag um, so, but Nathan is hosting a giveaway on his, on his, uh, Ravelry group. And so if you watch his, if you're not watching the Sockmetician's podcast, you really should be watching it. It's really good fun. He's really entertaining, really good at telling stories. And yeah, Nathan's just a pleasure to listen to. So he's hosting a giveaway for one of my medium sized project bags, um, which is the male orientated one. It's. I don't have one with me to show you, but it's a um, purple and blue sort of checked pattern on a white background and it's lined in grey. <coughs> Sorry, my voice is going all funny. Just grab some water. Sorry about that. Um, 
And so he's hosting a giveaway on his Ravelry group. So go check out his latest podcast episode and his Ravelry group and find out how you can enter. So, so yeah, so go take part, join his group, join, subscribe to his podcast. It's amazing. And yeah, so that's that. And I think that pretty much covers that stuff. Moving on to acquisitions. This is the fun stuff. So I had two fun things come in the mail this week and I'm so excited. They're all so excited. So they will be rustling. I apologize in advance. Really am not that sorry. And they're so pretty. I bought four skeins of yarn from Vicky who is, has the Barnville, Barnville? My, I'm so sorry if I'm not pronouncing this right. In my head, I'm saying it correctly, but when I open my mouth, it doesn't come out the same. Barnville yarn in Germany. And I think all of them are the same base. Barnes, oh no, there's two, two different bases. Okay. So this one is her bar, barfoot sock. So it's 100 grams, 400 meters, 437 yards. It's 80% um, extra fine merino and 20% polyamide. It's really soft, super squishy, beautifully speckled yarn. And this one is speckled series iris colorway. How pretty is that? The greens, the purples, the, even the pinks. It's also pretty. Mm -hmm. And I also got her half and half number one, and this is her Baron Stark sock. So this is 75% virgin wool and 25% polyamide, so a slightly different sock blend. But this one is half and half, so this one stripes. So one stripe is this pink and the other stripe is this speckled green, green and orangey. So there's little bits of orange in there as well. You can see a bit more there, like this yellowy orange color on a natural background. So I'm so excited to see how this one knits up. This looks like it's gonna be really fun. And I also got, you can tell I'm on a speckled kick right now. I also got her barefoot sock in the pond colorway. I think this was the first skein of her of yarn that I saw that I was like, I have to have it. I have to have this one. And I, she knit up a pair of socks in these and they look gorgeous. And these are definitely going to be socks for me. I love this colorway. This is 80% extra fine merino, 20% polyamide. It's so beautiful. And I just, I think I mentioned this before, but I absolutely love blue and orange together. And this is just, perfectly feeds into that love of blue and orange. The last one I got from her is also in Barfoot Sock, so it's the Merino Polyamide Blend. And this one is in the September Forest colorway. And I was tossing up between getting this version or the Tweedy version that she has. I went for this one in the end because I just, mm, it's just so beautiful. And it's so soft. And I had to get this one because I love autumn, or fall, as you say in the States, and September is my favorite month because that's my birthday is in September. So I had to get the one called September Forest. How could I not? It's the perfect autumnal colors. I mean, you can tell I like shades of red and orange. I like all the colors. Can you not tell? <laughs> there is actually a very good mix of everything in that cupboard back there. Um, yeah. Mm. These, this will probably end up being my birthday cast on, I think. Already planning for September. And everything came beautifully packaged in lovely tissue paper. And yeah, so that's it for stuff that I've actually bought for myself. <laughs> then comes a very lovely package that uh, Carrie sent me, Carrie of Freckled Whimsy sent me a package and oh my god it is so beautiful it is actually ridiculous how gorgeous the stuff is in here um 
I was no way near expecting any of this. She didn't actually tell me what she was sending me, but um, it was quite funny actually, because when it arrived, I went and picked it up and on our way back from Saudi Arabia, when we saw past the post office and I picked it up. And I didn't really register at first, but then I realized the bag had been opened by customs when it arrived in Bahrain, because it's been, it's been sealed again with um, tape by Bahraini customs and it's got a stamp on the front. I'm not gonna show it's got addresses on it. Um, saying that it's been checked by customs. And I was like, okay, I'm curious now, what did she send me that um, customs felt they actually needed to open the bag? To get to that. Um, let's empty out the bag, be easier. Ooh. Ah, dropping stuff. Sorry for leaning. So in the bag, amongst all the other stuff down so it stops rustling amongst all the beautiful things in the bag which i will show you in a second was a bunch of tea a bunch of tea bags and then only upon inspecting the tea bags and reading what they were i realized two of them one in particular looks like it's been opened and then they've been stapled shut so i think they probably were wondering what was in the tea and maybe the smell of the tea or something had, um, had them get suspicious or something. I don't know what they thought was in the tea. But um, so yeah, I'm, <laughs> I think this is it because it's the only thing that looked like it had been touched in the bag. There was a little bit of yarn that I assume was wrapped around the tea bags, Carrie, um, but that was separated from them and the tea bags were sort of scattered throughout the package. So I think that might be it. The sweet and spicy one smells beautiful. It's a herbal and black tea, natural sweet flavors and spice notes play mysteriously together. It doesn't actually, oh, cinnamon and orange. That sounds awesome. And then there's one which is called victory tea, which is a caffeine free tea, wild cherry bark, hibiscus flower, rose hips, orange peel, spearmint leaf, lemongrass, Sounds nice. And there's a green tea chai, which should be nice to try, and pomegranate white tea, which I'm very interested to try. So as well as tea, the little tea saga and the bag being opened, it's a very lovely note that she sent me, a very lovely card, which I'm not going to show you, but I'm not going to show you what she wrote, but it was very sweet. And she sent me one of her business cards, a button, and some lovely lovely sweets which I love these you guys in the states call these smarties these are not what we call smarties in the UK but um, they're still yummy nonetheless I she also when we opened when I opened the bag and I took everything out most of this stuff there was all inside another sort of plastic bag and what we saw from what we could see from the outside was this at the bottom in the corner and um, Perry was like, what is that? Is that fudge? Can I eat it? So I was like, okay, let me check. I pull it out and I realize it's a little bit piece of Tough Woolen's um, sock soap in Black Orchid, which I'm so excited to try. Perry was incredibly disappointed it wasn't a fudge or chocolate for him to eat. But I didn't care, I loved it. I, I kept telling him, they're not sending stuff for you. <laughs> It's okay, I got it from chocolate in the end and he's fine. But, um, and I am so excited to try this out. And it smells amazing. I've resisted opening this um, until I showed it to you guys. But it's a little piece of tough Golden sock soap, which I've been wanting to try for ages, but I've never, her, stocks, her shop's been empty for a while. I've not been able to catch an update. And then the, the, the next three things are all just amazingly amazing. She sent me a beautiful bag package of minis with such a cute little card explaining what each one is. The little cute sheepy at the bottom. Anyway, I am so excited to get these into my sock yarn blanket, which by the way, I didn't show you guys this week only because not much has changed on it. I've added a few squares, but I'm gonna wait until I've added a bit more before I show it to you. It'd be a bit more interesting. I'll probably show it every couple of weeks or so. I'm excited by these and they're all so beautiful. 
such pretty colours. Put that down. She sent me a skein of Miss Babs Babette, which is beautiful. Again, this is the sock yarn base, three ply fingering, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, uh, 400 yards, which is just beautiful. I love these colours. Thank you so much, Carrie. That's just so sweet of you. So pretty. Seriously, I spent forever just sat there just hugging this yarn. And Perry was just looking at me like, what are you doing? The final thing that she sent me, sorry again, let me just do this really quickly. The final thing that she sent me, honestly, it has to be my favorite and I am just beyond ecstatic by this one. She sent me a one of her project bags, one of her sock nannies, and I have resisted the urge to wind this up and cast on a pair of socks, holding them in this bag until I showed you in this episode. I may have to do that soon, but we will see. Um, she showed this fabric on Instagram and I think I commented on it going about basically being like, I just about died with this one. It's so beautiful. It's cats, of course I love it. And open it up. And the inside is this awesome paw print fabric, which I love, it's so cute. Anyway, it's really lovely, sort of sturdy, stands up on its own project bag, and I love it. The bags are so well made. One of my, my friend Mel has one of her project bags, and I was still, like oogling it while we were in London. And I, when I met, when I saw her there, and I love lovely handle, with which comes off, and you can attach it to the zipper, so it's zippable as well if you want it to be. But yeah, just overwhelmed by the generosity and the loveliness of everything in this package, Carrie. Thank you so much. I am working on getting your package together, and I will have that sent out to you soon. I hope. Um, but yes, I'll I'll let you know, Carrie, when I get that ready to go. But yeah, and. Honestly, just overwhelmed. Overwhelmed pretty much sums up how I'm feeling right now. Um, but yeah, so I think after all of that, I'll move on to the week in review. And like I mentioned, we spent most of the last week in Saudi Arabia. We got home on Thursday evening, which is the end of the work week. We, I spent most of my time in the hotel um, the hotel that we stayed in is the one that's owned by the company Perry works for and um, conveniently it's right next door to his office so uh, back when Perry first started working for this for this company who at the time were his client because he was working for someone else um, they put him up in the hotel and then initially when he first started working for them or while we were still living in Dubai he stayed in the hotel during the weeks was part of the deal that until we moved they would put him up there and and yeah so he pretty much lived there five days a week for 10 months he knew all the staff we he had a regular room that they always gave him so we stayed in his regular room and all the staff were always so happy to see him every time he bumped into someone else he was like they were like oh hello and they were all really excited to see him again uh which was really lovely and then and then what else I tell you guys um because it was ramadan there's nowhere open for food during the day not that i could go anywhere anyway but the hotel will serve you food to your room so you we could order room service so we had breakfast and lunch and dinner in the room which is that's order room service so that was fine that wasn't really an issue to have to work around too much um where else was where else where else? I'm just checking my notes, see if there was anything else. Um, oh god, I had such a battle with my headscarf. I know I told you guys about this last week. I finally figured out a way to keep it on my head for the most part. Um, just used a couple of like curvy grips or bobby pins to like pin it to the side of my head, but it looked kind of weird. Um, I knew in order to keep it on my head properly, I needed to use like sewing pin type pins. I didn't have any with me, I only had a safety pin and I could only... Anyway figured it out in the end I know what to take with me next time and but it was okay and we did a trip to Ikea we didn't buy anything this time I wasn't in the right mood for it and I really 
needed to measure up a few things before we went to make sure we got the right stuff. But uh, we did go to IKEA. There is, I don't know if I mentioned this before, there isn't an IKEA in Bahrain. There's apparently um, discussions about one opening up soon, but I haven't heard anything about it recently. But there is one in Saudi Arabia, just on the other side of the causeway. So we swung past and now that I have my visa, we can just go for a day trip to go to IKEA and get some stuff if we ever need to. Um, the actual visa process in itself was relatively straightforward once we figured out what we needed to do. Um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was a bit painful at first because I would, we went somewhere, there was, there was a sign saying women's entrance, so I went that way, but it wasn't really an entrance, it was just a tiny room full of women and no one really, no one could really tell me what I was supposed to do. Then when I spoke to the security guy, he told me to go back wait in that room again. And then I was like, nothing's happening here. This doesn't seem right. Um, then we went into the main building. Walking into the main building felt a bit awkward for me because I was the only woman in the, in the building. But we eventually found someone in charge who took my passport and the forms and stuff. And he kind of mumbled something. I didn't fully understand what he said about going to wait somewhere. So I was with Perry and um, obviously and uh, he told us to go wait somewhere but I didn't understand what he said and I sort of turned back to Perry and was like I'm not leaving my passport I'm staying I'm going wherever my passport goes because I honestly at that point I had very little faith in what was going on at the time because I didn't fully understand I didn't really know if they knew what they were doing either I mean obviously I knew they knew what they were doing but because I didn't know where to go to wait I was like well I'll just rather follow my passport to be honest um kind of follow the passport a little bit and then I think I lost it somewhere along the way. I mean, I lost the person who was holding my passport. And then there was another Saudi Arabian guy sort of realised we were waiting outside of a room because I thought my passport was in there and it turned out it wasn't. And so he helped us out. He found out where I was supposed to go to wait. So we w went back there. It turned out it was the ladies room again. So I was sat in this ladies room. I'm not entirely sure how long I was going to have to wait for if anyone was going to come get me or anything. Um, and Perry was messaging me, he went back, I told him to go back to the car because there was no point in him waiting out in the heat, he can go sit in the air conditioning. And uh, he kept messaging me, he was like, any news, anything happened yet? I was like, I have no idea, I have zero faith in my passport, that my passport is going to come find me here. Um, so he was like, okay, just, just wait, I'll go, I'll go back in and I'll see what's happening or I'll see if I can find what's happening or the guy or whatever. So he went back in and about 10 minutes later he sent me a text saying I've got your I've got, I've got your residence card and your passport like come come meet me out front. So I was like great perfect. To be fair all in all the whole process we were there for about half an hour 45 minutes maybe. I'm pretty sure and Perry said it as well he was like I'm pretty sure you got priority treatment. I'm not sure why um, probably because I was a westerner but um, that tends to happen over here quite a lot. If you're a Westerner, if you have a Western passport, you tend to get um, better treatment. Not because you necessarily deserve it or but for any other reason and they think, I don't know why, but it just happens sometimes. Um, anyway, they seem to just process it quicker. And yeah, got my residence card. You don't actually get a visa stamped in your passport, you get a residence card. Um, and they call that an Ikama, I-Q-A-M-A, Ikama. So I got that with the worst photo ever, literally the most horrendous picture. Uh, and it's sort of like at an angle as well, so I kind of look a bit like, <laughs> it's pretty funny. And um, you know, we headed back to the hotel. So after getting my Ikama and finally getting the residency visa sorted, I then had to wait for Perry to then get me my exit permit. What it is, it's basically like a multi-entry permit. So once you get your residency visa or res residency card, you're then allowed to stay in Saudi Arabia, but then you have to get another permit to be able to leave the country. Anyway, that was relatively easily sorted and we came home the next evening. And yeah, so that pretty much sums up the our time there. Um, another thing, I don't know how much uh, you guys would know about this or don't know about this, but the all the American food chains are incredibly popular in Saudi Arabia, like really popular. There's McDonald's everywhere, there's Burger King, 
Um, there's Applebee's, Chili's, um, can't think of all the other ones to be honest, but there are so many and they're all over the place. Starbucks is everywhere. Um, I just thought that was really quite surreal as well. But actually in that part of Saudi Arabia where we are, there is a large um, sort of, there is a large American presence there as well because there's the Saudi Aramco base is um, is near there as well. And Saudi Aramco, for those of you who don't know, is um, a Saudi American oil company. So yeah, you can imagine there are a lot of Americans there as well. And it's one of the largest oil, I believe it's one of the largest oil producers in the region or in that region of Saudi Arabia, I think. Don't quote me on that one, I'm probably wrong. But yes, so that's that. We came home and whilst we were away, my mum had messaged me a few times asking, well, I'm just chatting normally. And then she was like, oh, well, since I have you here, um, are you available? Are you free for me to come over for a week in July? <clears throat> I was like, yeah, it's fine. We're not planning on going anywhere in July. Perry's off for a week for his course, but I'm for once, I'm not planning on going anywhere this month, this next month. So she's booked her flights and she's coming to Bahrain on Friday and she'll be here for about um, nine, ten days. So she's here over the two weekends and the week in between. So this is one reason why I'm trying to get my project bags out this week is whilst my mum's here, I'm not going to be as productive with the sewing or the knitting probably. And I just wanted to get some bags out and updated in the shop before she got here or at least ready to go up in the shop before she gets here so I don't have to worry about it too much so so yes yeah, so I'm looking forward to having her over showing her around a bit even though it is Ramadan she's it doesn't bother her which is fine and yeah so that pretty much sums it up um, it was a relatively relaxed weekend but it's still quite busy still got a lot of stuff done I sorted out my yarn as you can see from my yarn cabinet here. That pretty much sums up my stash right there. Three shelves that aren't even completely full. But it's still good. It's a good stash. I've got some lace, drops lace up there, some other drops yarn. Ooh, trying to do this backwards here. And then on the, ooh, there we go. There's some Knit Picks palette. Then I've got some Mystery DK, which I got at I Knit Fandango. And then I've got some bulky, that's the Rico Creative Melange Chunky, which I use to make my hat, the Cables for Lara hat. Then down here, I've got all my uh, fingering weight yarns. These are mm, like 100% merino usually, or the other sort of hand dyed yarns. There's the Walmines Lace Garn cake up there. Then this bottom row of rainbow colors is Icelandic Einband, Luffy Einband. So it's that lace weight. And then there's uh, Knit Picks Comfy. And then there's the Chilean uh, Corridor that uh, Nina from Fuzzy Love Nuts sent, uh, yeah, Fuzzy Love Nuts sent me. And over here in this corner, I have all my hand dyed sock yarn. Then down here, pretty much from this corner up to about here, is all my commercial sock yarn. Sorry, I am really bad at this. This is all my commercial sock yarn, and including this little basket of Regia. And then I've got here my Malabrigo Worsted. And at the top here is Icelandic uh, Loppy Cam Garn, which I think is their Icelandic Merino yarn, which I'm planning on making my Marco Polo out of. So there's actually about one, two, three, four, sweater quantities of five sweater quantities of yarn up there that I'm planning that I've actually got um, cardigans planned for so yeah I'm excited by that I'm glad to have all my yarn out finally all my nice yarn out I still I have some other yarn that's in a plastic box but that is mostly acrylics and some not so nice cotton well they're cotton they're fine they're not terrible but um, I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with them yet. But that's all my nice stuff. And I have all this other pretty stuff to add to the loveliness that's already up there. 
So, moving on to the Q&A section. Um, just there's something I need to pick out from under here. Sorry. So, Q&A section. There's only a couple of questions, so I thought I'd answer those this week really quickly. The, um, a couple of people over the last several weeks now have commented that um, they'd prefer it if I looked at the lens rather than at the screen, which and most of you know I film using my iPhone. Um, and it's actually a lot more difficult for me anyway. I know some people can manage it fine, but it's actually quite difficult for me to focus on the little tiny lens on the side of the iPhone um, whilst there's an image moving to on the side of it. And my eye automatically gets drawn to that image. It's not that I'm trying to look at myself. It's just, it's the movement attracts my eyes and I don't even realize I do it. So apologies for that. I do try to focus on looking at the lens um but i'm not perfect so apologies for that uh, i do try <laughs> um someone on instagram i think it was on instagram it might have been in the ravelry group asked who we have looking after our cats while we're away well we're, re we're really lucky in that we've got a lovely friend who um she lives quite close by and she loves animals as well and so she comes by a couple times a day when we've been away to feed the boys and play with them and clean up after them and all of that stuff. And she's really lovely. And we've been really lucky so far um, that she's been available when we've been traveling. Um, otherwise, our only option will be to put them into a cattery, which I'm not fond of that idea. I mean, if we had to, we would, but it's not something I would like to do the boys do get quite stressed with change, especially Derek, and Derek has had stress-related health issues in the past, so I'd really rather not put him through that if possible. They're much more comfortable in an environment that they're familiar with, so, um, so yeah, I'd rather keep them here if possible. Keep them at home and have someone come to them. So that's what we've been doing so far, and that's what we did when we were in Dubai. We had a pet sitter, someone who came by when we were away. Um, another question I had was from Sally Jane of the Pink Hair Girl podcast. She asked me on one of my Instagram photos how my Nurturing Fiber socks were holding up. And because both, uh, she said that only all the socks that she's made using this yarn have, um, basically she's blown through them. So they've got holes and stuff. Because this is 100% merino yarn, it's not a, a sock yarn blend. There's no nylon in it. But mine seems to have held up pretty fine so far. There's some slight fuzziness that's happening. You can see there. Slight pilling and fuzziness on the sole of the foot. But I kind of expect that. Um, but I don't wear my socks too hard, to be honest, because I don't wear socks outside the house here. And I did take these with me to London, and I did wear these a lot in boots when I was in London. And they held up fine. Like I said, they're a little bit sort of like got nubbly bits on them and stuff, but they're socks. And these will probably these probably will last me longer than they last for most people because, like I said, I don't wear my socks too hard. I just wear them around the house, really. So, or when I happen to go on holiday, so it's not like they get worn all the time or that strenuously. So I think they should be okay. But I do. I I probably would be wary of knitting socks with yarn that doesn't have nylon in it going forward now um also I just wanted to say i loved seeing your question your answers to the questions i posted last week and the week before it was so much fun to read them if you haven't read people's comments on um last week's question which was about places that you visited or things that you've done that you never expected to do and the week before where i asked um where's the weirdest place that you've knit there are some really interesting answers to those questions and some really funny, some are really like, thought provoking and um, a lot of last week's question answers to the question have really kind of made me want to go traveling again, like, like proper traveling, not just for like, a week here, a week there, like take a few months and go traveling. Um, it's probably not really that great rhythm for right now, but, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been lovely to read those answers. So my questions for you this week are, what is a new to you knitting technique that you would like to learn how to do? I've mentioned this before for me, but some of the knitting techniques that I'd like to learn how to do 
are brioche knitting. Um, I'm planning on doing an exploration station shawl soon. Well, I say soon, at some point. Um, where that involves some brioche knitting as well. So I'm quite interested to see how that would work out. Then um, I'd like, I've, all, I know I've mentioned this a few times now about beading in my knitting. I still haven't uh, gotten around to trying that out. And double knitting. Double knitting I have tried, I showed you that little swatch that I did, but I'm planning on actually doing a proper project in double knitting, which I'm really excited to try out soon. And what else? Well, zippers, zippers in my knitting, which I will be doing soon. So yeah, do let me know of any uh, sort of knitting techniques that you'd like to learn how to do, or maybe something that you recently learned how to do. How did you find it? Was it interesting? What tutorials did you use? Um, it'd be really interesting to sh share that sort of knowledge and information with everyone else as well. If you found a tutorial for knitting technique that you are um, interested in learning, it'd be nice to share that with everyone. Um, and my second question is going to be, so now I'm going to be having two knit alongs, running my Sunrace shawl knit along and a rainbow knit along. What other sort of knit along ideas or knit along themes would you guys like to see in the future? There are lots of sock knit alongs, there are lots of sort of like shawl knit alongs and stuff, but is there anything sort of specific that you guys like to see or uh, would like me to host or something in the future? Because I like doing knit alongs. I'm thinking I will probably do another one in a, in a couple of months once these ones have finished up because they're fun. They're, they're nice, they're a good way to get involved in the community and get some chatter going and c connecting with other people. So, so yeah, let me know if there's anything that you'd be interested in doing and I'll give that, give that some thought. And yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up for this week. I hope I didn't miss anything out and I hope I haven't rushed through it too much. But uh, thank you so much for taking the time to sit with me today. I've or whenever it is that you're watching this and feel free to connect with me on any of the links down below like I'm on Ravelry, Instagram, um, Etsy, I think that's it. I'm not on Twitter. I've never used Twitter. Um, but yeah, everything's linked down below. Thank you so much for, like I said, taking the time to spend with me today. If you have any questions or suggestions for the podcast, feel free to let me know. There's a questions and suggestions thread in the Ravelry group. Then um, make sure you go along to the episode thread and leave your answers to the questions in there and or just let me know what you thought of the episode. And, and yeah, thank you so much to everyone who's subscribed, bought a bag, joined the group, joined in the conversation, bought one of my patterns. Thank you for everything. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys next week, hopefully. Take care. Bye.